God bless you, everybody, at the sound of my voice. You welcome to part three of this team this month. Discover your purpose. Discover your purpose. Very, very important in our life. Purpose and callings are synonymous in this teaching. But calling and career are two different things. So, as we said, that let us go to the presence of God in prayer. Father, we thank you because of this precious day to preach your precious word to your precious people. We worship you because of the power of your word. Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. I pray that the power of the gospel will permit homes and families and nations right now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace to that home, peace to that family. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Satan, your assignment has been canceled. Say that with me. Satan, your assignment has been canceled over me, over my family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are welcome to today's message. This is part three. In the message you dis we call Discover Your Purpose. Very, very important. I'm taking my lesson from John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he May give it you. Jesus is the A to Z. All the English alphabets, all the letters in English describe Jesus. Hallelujah. So in this one, this chapter 15 of John, I, that is Jesus, the subject matter. You remember in Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Let me read that one. It's powerful. Hallelujah. Revelation 1, 11. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Oh, hallelujah. See, the first and the last. Amen. A in English letters, English alphabet represent ability. Jesus is our ability. That is why I don't care you be old or, or, or young. Jesus is our ability. When he send you the messenger, a message, you send you a message, we keep you to accomplish that. When you try to do God's work in the energy of flesh, that is called religion. Can do all things through him who strengthens you and I. Praise the Lord. So A represent ability and B represent bread of life. Jesus is our bread of life. You know, I am listening, I'm connected to Christ. I am connected to Christ. Not I will be connected when I do enough good works. No. I'm connected with Christ already. But you are born again. You are connected to the Christ. Praise the Lord. Not your argument, not your strength, your strength in the spirit realm. All you need to discover is your purpose. Amen. Purpose and calling. Listen, your purpose and calling is more powerful than the enemy's plan. Your purpose. Calling is more powerful than the enemy's plan. So, therefore, you are here to get rid of the works of the devil. Say that with me. I am here to get rid of the works of the devil. And you are in the law, you are not Satan messenger. No. In the Lord, you are not Satan manager. In the law, you are Satan destroyer. You have to destroy Satan. That's why you have to discover 
your purpose. Your purpose in the Lord is five. We have fivefold purpose in the Lord, and you have fivefold anointing in the Lord. And you have fivefold purpose and fivefold anointing. In previous teaching, you can go there so you can get the entire teaching. We're going to have a 12 series in this God's purpose. Today's part three. So, purpose, listen to me. You have five purpose in, in God, and I have five, five purpose with five purpose with five fold anointing. Excuse me, you have five fold purpose with five fold anointing. In previous teaching, I said life without purpose will bring in fatigue. You're tired every time. Come from vacation, you're tired. You sleep when you wake up, you're tired. You're going to work, you're tired. You have to discover your purpose. And I said, life without purpose, we lack focus. You can be busy without being effective. You go to my previous teaching. I said, life without purpose also void of discipline. No discipline. You don't know your purpose. And without discipline, there's no maturity. You can grow old. That does not mean you grow up. It means a maturity is needed to fulfill your assignment. In part three today, I want you to know that purpose precedes the following. Number one, purpose precedes passion. And purpose precedes focus. And focus, uh, purpose precedes discipline. And purpose precedes maturity. Hallelujah. I see somebody free right now. Age is not factor here. I'm telling you, but the real matter is your purpose. Bible said the spirit of the Lord that raised Jesus Christ from grave dwells in you. That spirit will quicken your mortal body. Amen. Say somebody free. Say that with me. Say I am free. Listen. Your purpose and your calling. Hmm? That's two elements are not the same with your career. No. Now this thing, you can change your career, but you cannot change God's calling on your life. Your career, in previous teaching, I said, your career is what you get paid for. But your calling is what you born again for. That is why you are not out from this evil world when you are saved. God wants you to be here to fulfill your assignment. Say, I'm going to fulfill, say that with me, my assignment. Say it again, I am going to fulfill my assignment. So you can take, listen, your calling into your career. But you cannot replace your career. You cannot replace your calling with your career. You can take your calling into your career. But you cannot replace your calling with your career. No. Two different things. Amen. That is why, that is what happened to the church in Laodicea. In Revelation chapter 1. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Amen. Your career is what you get paid for. Amen. Ah, but your calling is what you born again into. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 says, Behold, thou said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Without knowing your purpose, you can be rich, you won't get fulfilled. And God sees you as naked, vulnerable to attack. Praise God. It's very important. So I said in a previous message that there are, listen to me, five fold purpose. Number one, 
Your first purpose is to have fellowship with Jesus. Are you hearing? We call it, listen, sonship. Listen, element. Amen. So that fellow with Jesus comes with sonship anointing. Amen. I told you before. In 1 Corinthians 1 9. 1 Corinthians 1 9 says, God is faithful, whom we are called to the fellowship of his son. We call it born again. We experience a divine encounter. Oh, hallelujah. John 1 12. For as many as receive him, he gave them power. Hey, to become the children of God. And that translation said it gave them right to the invisible realm. Whoa! Jesus said, if you are not born of the Spirit, you are spiritually blind. In John 3, 3, John 3, 3 says, so the man be born again cannot even see the kingdom. And that is the entry level. You have a canter. Oh, hallelujah. The solution now is within you. What are looking for hope is within you when you are born again. You don't pray, oh God, come down. No. Colossians 1 27. Colossians 1 27 says it's a mystery that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. So that first encounter or this sonship with sonship. Anointing. Amen. Is the foundation. So when you discover that you are born of the Spirit, I'm, you may, I'm not going to say going to church. You may go to you may be going to church without being born again. It is very important. You don't become a car because you sleep in a garage. Amen. You have to. Ask Jesus to come to your life as a personal Savior. I will ask you to do that at the end of this message. But it's the beginning. You have been equipped now. It is the beginning. Oh, hallelujah. You are now master over devil, master over disease. Hallelujah. Begin to move for the next session. Because the moment you discover your purpose, listen to me. Enemy will discover you. Why? Because you are here to put him out of business. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Man, that's powerful. If you don't believe in you are in Christ, listen, if you don't believe in you are in Christ, you'll be able to function spiritually. You'll be able to function in a gap in love. You will lose your identity. You don't, you don't work to be loved. Activities stem from identity, not on the way around, not on that way around. You don't work well so God can love you. No. You are loved by God. Greek word called agape love. Hey, hey. Wow. And that is the nature of God. Look at John chapter, in 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, verse, chapter, chapter 4, verse 19, 1 John 4, 19 say, hallelujah, listen to what the Bible say, in 1 John chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 19, say, we loved him, listen to me, because he first loved us. I was just asking from Peter, said, do you love me? Another one, do you discover my love in you? If you discover my love in you, then you can feed my sheep. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. You know, because that love is God's nature. God is love. Power is God's attribute. All power belongs to him, but he himself is love. 
at what we can find in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He say, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, because God is love. So now, the second purpose in our life, the first one that you are called to have fellowship with Jesus, to experience the supernatural realm. The second purpose. Now you are called to the ministry of prophetic. You have to be prophetic in your approach in life. I'm not saying prophet. You prophesize. You speak what God says concerning your situation. Faith does not speak the present situation. Faith speaks solution to the present situation. And that nature is one that will destroy the works of the devil. If something is not going great in your life, that's demons. Oh, go get that from God. You get stuff financially, it's demon. You get stuff relationally, it's demon. And what do you do? You speak prophetic, prophetically to your situation. Now that ministration stems from God's nature. That ministration Stem from agape, love. Amen. So when Bible says, put, put it down the stronghold, he say our weapon is mighty through God. Oh, no, 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 it's mighty through love. It's mighty through the nature of God to be pulling down the stronghold. Hallelujah. That is second Corinthians 10, verse 3 and 5. Verse 3 and 5. You put down the strong goal. Things that don't go right with you. Disease. How do you do that? You speak from the realm of the Lord. Hallelujah. But if you just speak, 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 you don't know the nature of God that is love. Your prophetic utterance is in vain. That's not your portion. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Don't forget the second the purpose. Mm -hmm. The second purpose is ministrations of prophetic. And you do that in love. If you speak solution to your situation, but you don't understand the love of God, it's in vain. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, Love never fails, which means God never fails. There are 20 things that you need to know about God. It will send me your information. I will send it to you. 20 things. But here, love never fails, or God never fails. But where there are prophecy, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will steal. Where there's none there, it will pass away. Those are God's attributes to operate in this life. When one Jesus appears, you don't need that. But love, the nature of God forever. So if you operate in gift, and you don't allow that gift to operate through love, it's in vain. Then what is love? Oh, hallelujah. What is love? Love, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. You can read it your time. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Love, I'm reading for NIV. Love is patience. You hear me? Love is patience. Number two, love is kind. Number three, love does not envy. Number four, it does not boast. Five, it does not proud. Read it. We will continue on this on Wednesday. This is what you need to pull down the stronghold. If you don't know this truth, you'll be deceived. I will continue on this on Wednesday. This was one of the signs. There are four signs I will be teaching in this, uh, this message in this month about your calling. One of the things that Jesus said in the last day, you see, Religion will produce deception. Religion without redeemer. 
Matthew 24, verse 3 and 4. Say, be careful, don't be deceived. Verse 11, say, don't be deceived. Verse 24, say, don't be deceived by so-called prophet. And to understand the nature of God. You read this definition of love from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And we meet me here. Come on, on Wednesday, every demon that attack your business and your church cannot stand. The moment you discover your purpose, passion will follow that. And faith will not be a struggle no more. It becomes your second nature. Because faith begins where the will of God is known. You are called to bring fruit. And to bring fruit, you have to be mature. Maturity is another word for love. To be continue that on Wednesday. I pray if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, come on, let's go to his name right now. He's here and he's with you. Say, Lord Jesus, say that with me, Lord Jesus. Come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Say, Amen. Send that. Welcome to the family of God. Now, the solution to the problem of this world lives in you now. Then you begin to be a witness for this love. Jesus said, when you love, you feed my sheep. When you operate in love, you operate in God. And when you operate in God, you will never fail. I want to join my faith with your faith as if somebody's listening to me now. You have my great headache. It's like constantly people did not let you sleep or rest. I ban that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Lose or hold. Somebody listen to me. You have chronic fear. You are afraid. Afraid, afraid. You are, you are afraid to sleep. You are afraid when you wake up. You are afraid to go to war. You are, you are afraid. You Baba. That is the spirit of devil. You cannot stand this. I bring them down now. And they, 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 God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear. Lose or grip right now in the name of Jesus. I go. Man, Basha. Oh, some of you are listening to me now. You just, you just heard the bad news from doctors about your situation. See, you have cancer. Then we say, yes, stage three cancer. I'm here, stage three. I come against that now in the name of Jesus. Go back to hell where you came from. He never stand up. Lose that man and that woman and let him or her be free. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody receive that now. Receive that. Receive that. In the name of Jesus. I receive. Amen. Wow. That's what I got today because of our time. You meet me again on Wednesday. We're going to pass four. We go deep about your purpose in life. So your family, the people in the circle of your influence will celebrate you. Because you, you God want to make you to be a man, a woman that brings solution their life. And I will be continuing to be teaching on this. I will, I will tell you how to react or relate or to respond in every situation. God bless you is my prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, if you are anywhere in Rhode Island, our church is God's Family Church, 1525 Broad Street in Cranston, Rhode Island, here in USA. Our service every Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Come and join the group of winners. Hallelujah. Praise God. And anywhere you view this in the world, make sure on Sunday you go to Bible Believing Church where your new life reality is going to be taught. And join them. Oh, hallelujah. Spread this in all your social platforms. Hallelujah. And meet me here tomorrow, um, Wednesday. The same time and the same place. Remember, Jesus is love. Amen and amen.